welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one right here is for the brand new year, 2023. This is Doctor Who, Season 4, Episode Number 7. And Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you. Yeah, a couple comments from the last episode, starting with Jeremy, who says this was a great episode. It's one of my favorites and my top list of what we've seen so far. With Blink being my number one, then Girl in the Fireplace, which interestingly also featured an actress that was great and made the audience like her right away. Hoping that maybe they could see more of her, only for her to die at the end, although this time she didn't stay dead, which I was very happy about. Then the Doctor dances two-parter, then this one. At least those are the ones up to this point that I think about and look forward to people's reactions of, along with the Master's introdu introduction, although the episode as a whole doesn't necessarily make my top list, but the ending does. Does. I was also intending to add a bunch of information about Georgia, Moffat, now Tenet, but the comments above handled all that. Great reaction. I look forward to the next one. Oh, I'm reading the comments out of order. My bad. <laughs> um, Ricardo adds, one of my favorite episodes and another example of what a great companion Donya, Donna is. Um, besides figure, figuring out what the numbers meant, she was able to get the doctor to accept Jenny as a person and not as a soldier. Seeing the hope he had that he might have a second chance at being a parent be literally shot down was heartbreaking. Even if she did end up coming back at the end, the doctor just can't get a break when it comes to his race. Um, then we got uh, executive producer Jojo says, so this episode has the biggest... Uh, in joke because a young lady is literally the doctor's daughter because her father was one of the original doctors in the old Doctor Who. Oh. She also is now the doctor's wife because Georgia Tennant met her future husband filming this episode. Oh That's so funny, crazy. <laughs> wow, they married now? I wonder what their age difference is. Mm, yeah, she looks young, young. She looks super young, yeah. Um, then we got CJ coming through to say, to pick it back on what JoJo said, she is the daughter of the fifth doctor who happens to be David Tennant's favorite doctor. So his favorite doctor is now his father-in-law. Georgia Tennant has a really funny social media presence, presence, which is often centered around her being the daughter and wife of the doctor. Oh, that's fun. I like when people embrace stuff like that. Georgia Tennant. Um, since their son Ty Tennant is an actor currently in House of the Dragon, there's a lot of people who want to see him cast as the Doctor so Georgia can add Mother to the Doctor on her resume. That is adorable. Crazy. That's so cute. Uh, fun fact about this episode, the actors who played the half actually had lines in English written into their scripts, but the rest of the actors just had bubble noises written on their scripts. This worked so well because the half actors actually knew how to emote and interact with each other, whereas the humans, including Martha, truly didn't understand what they were saying. Mm. Very cool. Okay. Um, then we got EP uh, Churchill Cigar coming through the, to say there's a whole bunch of fun trivia around Jenny. She play, She's played by Georgia Moffat who is the daughter of the Fifth Doctor's actor, Peter Davison. As Jojo has said, she was uh, she met David Tennant during the filming of this episode and soon after became Georgia Tennant, meaning that David Tennant's favorite doctor when he was a kid became his father-in-law. They also have five kids together, which means that the Doctor's daughter yeah. plays the Doctor's daughter and is the mother of the Doctor's daughter. I can't even. So much right there. Yeah. Um, Russell T. Davies, the showrunner at the time, initially planned for Jenny to stay dead in the episode, but writer and future showrunner Stephen Moffat suggested that she be resurre resurrected at the end. When Russell was asked what would happen to Jenny next, he jokingly answered that she immediately crashed into a moon and died. <laughs> and a, she, moon a moon and died. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Thankfully, this didn't prove to be true, or her true fate, and she has since featured in a number of comics, and a few years ago, she got her own run of audio drama showcasing her adventures after resurrecting. Okay. Love the reaction. I look forward to the back half of series four. Okay. Alright, well, let's jump into the next episode right now. Beautiful day, Lord's in his heaven, all's right with the world. Reverend, good night, 
many ever so requests that you make yourselves comfortable in your rooms. Cocktails will be served on the lawn from half past four. You go on up. I need to check something in the library. Oh, hello. It's supposed to be a party. All this Ooh, work. We've definitely. Yeah. Never mind, planet Zog. A party in the 1920s. That's more like it. Come is. We haven't been invited. Oh, I forgot. Let's get out. I was right. Kept secret all these years. It's unbelievable. But why didn't they ask? Oh, it's you. I was just doing a little research. I say, what are you doing with that lead piping? Oh my god, it's like a blue, baby. Yeah, it's impossible. Oh, god. I know it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. is Miss Donna Noble of the Chiswick Nobles. Good afternoon, my lady. Chopping day, what? Spiffing. Top house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were thrilled to receive your invitation, my lady. We met at the Timbridge. ambassador's reception. Don't have words words with it, in fact, one must be sure with the unicorn on the loose. A unicorn? Brilliant. Why? Uh, the unicorn. The jewel thief. And nobody knows who he is. He's just struck again. Snatched Lady Babington's pearls right from under her nose. Funny place to wear pearls. May I announce the Colonel Hugh you Kirbishley, the Honourable <laughs> Roger Kirbishley. My husband. <laughs> and my son. Forgive me for not rising. Never been the same ever since that flu epidemic back in 18. Oh, my word. You are a super lady. Oh, I like the colour of your chin. Chin chin. Hello, I'm the doctor. How do you do? Very well. Who are you, sir? Huh. Thank you, Davenport. That's how I like it. Oh, she's an Edison, but her husband has other curvishes. The Edison title ascends through her. One day, Roger will be a lord. Rubina Redmond. She's the absolute heat of the social scene. A must. Miss Redmond. They're things we do at last, my lady. Reverend nice. Arnold Golacki. Just Reverend announcing everybody coming to the party. Oh, That's how they used to do. I heard about the church last Thursday night. Those ruffians breaking in. You apprehended them, I hear. As the Christian fathers taught me, we must forgive them their trespass. Reflected in the glass of the bookcase. You crafty man. This is all that was left. Was that first letter N or M? It's an M. The word is maiden. Maiden! What's that mean? Why do you yell? Our nemesis remains at large. Unless this noble's found something. I find you with my amazing powers of detection. Uh, can we return to sanity? There are no such things as giant dwarfs. 
Exactly. So, the question is, what's he doing here? You might see a big ass bee. Or a bug outside. But who wanted to do the old professor? He was always asking questions about that book of his. What's all that about? A dead man's body. Nothing more. Perhaps if he asked about. I must go and see my lady. Uh oh. They keep not finishing their question about what they should ask about. Yeah, it's always a movie. Months. 
in a room that has been kept locked ever since, which I rather think means... Stop, please. I'm so sorry. But you had fallen pregnant in India. Unmarried and ashamed, you hurried back to England with your confidant, a young maid, later to become housekeeper, Miss Chandra Khanna. Clemency, is this true? My poor baby. Oh, oh that's why she's away. The shame of it. But you've never said a word. What? I had no choice. She was pregnant. Imagine the what? She wasn't, she was doing it with she was pregnant. Ah, she was changing off the pregnancy. And it was now a memory pregnancy. How can you know that? Excuse me, Agatha, this is my territory, but when you heard that buzzing sound in the dining room, you said, it can't be. Why did you say that? You never believe it. The doctor has opened my mind to believe Many things. Baby? It's the 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 wasp for baby. Years ago. In the heat of Delhi, late one night. And forty years ago. I was alone, and that's when I saw it. A dazzling light in the sky. The next day he came to the house. Christopher, the most handsome man I'd ever seen. Our love blazed like a wildfire. I am. And in return, he showed me the incredible truth about himself. He made himself human to learn about us. This was his true shape. I loved him so much it didn't matter, but he was stolen from me. 1885, the year of the great monsoon. The river Jumna rose up and broke its banks. He was taken at the flood. Christopher left me a parting gift, a jewel like no other. I wore it always, part of me never forgot. I kept it close. Always. Just like a man. Flashes his family jewels and you end up with a ban in the oven. A poor little child. Forty years ago, Miss Chandra Carla took that newborn babe to an orphanage. But Professor Peach worked it out. He found the birth certificate. Oh, that's maiden. Maiden name. Precisely. So oh. she killed him. I did not. Miss Chandra Carla feared that the professor had unearthed your secret. She was coming to warn you. So she killed her. I did not. <laughs> Edison is innocent. Because at this point, Doctor. Thank you. At this point, when we consider the lies and the secrets key to these events, then we have to consider it was you, Donna Noble, who got angry. Proper deep anger for the first time in your life, and it broke the genetic lock. You changed. Pop those You realized your inheritance after all these years. You knew who you were. Oh, and then it all kicks off. Is this? Is it just a jewel? It's a best performed telepathic recorder. It's part of you, your brain, your very essence. And when you activated, so did the Firestone. It beamed your full identity directly into your mind. And at the same time, it absorbed the works of Agatha Christie directly from Lady Edison. It all became part of you. Mechanics of those models from the template in your brain. You killed in this pattern because that's what you think the world is. Then tell we are in the middle of a murder. Yes, there we are. What are you doing, Agatha? D. Oh. Sorry, not yet. So he killed him. Yes? Definitely? Yes. Well, this has certainly been a most entertaining evening. Really, you. I can't believe any of this, surely, Lady Edison. I do. Lady Edison. There's a little buzzing there, big cat. Don't make me angry. Why? Why at this name? Damn it. You humans. <laughs> Worshipping your tribal sky gods. <laughs> I am so much more. <laughs> that that night, the universe exploded in my mind. I wanted to take what was <laughs> mine. And you... Agatha Christie with your railway station bookstore romances. <laughs> What's <laughs> to stop me killing you? Oh, my dear God. <laughs> my child. What's <laughs> to stop me killing you? <laughs> Imagination made you kill, and my imagination made 
so we'll find a way to stop you. Foul creature! Five 
People never stop reading them. She is the best-selling novelist oh, of all time. Five billion, babe. Are still publishing her books. But she never knew. Well, no, that's how they're going to be remembered. All we can do is hope for the best. Maybe that's what kept her writing. And it keeps me traveling. Onwards. Upwards. Onwards. <laughs> all right, that was episode seven of Doctor Who and we had a little murder mystery with Agatha Christie which you know I know I've read some Agatha Christie books in school um very good writer in the mystery realm for sure uh this added to I thought we was gonna play some clue games with this or like some, drop some clue hints on there but I guess it was just too on the nose and they didn't even want to go there plus they already hit the Agatha Christie angle on there which okay again they merged in um, um, a mystery plot trying to be and then they threw in the sci-fi in there, right? And they, I guess they just randomly roll the dice and what kind of alien we gonna have? Wasp. But not only a wasp, a, a huge ass wasp that can turn into a human. Okay, that's why it got silly for me right there. As it always tend to do though in this show. But I just say I'm growing to accept it at this point. But they did give you a lot more of just like the mystery and, and the character doing what they do. So I found that pretty enjoyable. And then the mystery at the end to uh, when they figured out who the person was, which was good. But then how they killed the, the wasp at the end, I was just like, that was, you know. They just like, let's just get it over with and be done with it. But I thought it was a good adventure right here. Um, good little growth step for the two characters. Because Donna totally kissed them on there. That's going to have some repercussions down there. I don't think it will. Maybe. That's not just shock. I and mean, he clearly said that we don't have to do that again. Yeah, okay. So, like, I feel like... Well, we see how that goes. But other than that, it was a pretty good episode, man. And uh, I can't wait to see it, though. No. Yeah, I thought it was entertaining. I like the whole murder mystery. I love the clue feel. I, like, called that immediately in the first part when it first revealed and I like that it actually played to that. I like yeah. the Ag Ag Agatha Christie um, portion of it too. I thought that was really good. Um, and I thought the the way everything finally was revealed, I didn't guess who the person was at all. So like I never even thought about the priest until the very last second when it's obviously being revealed. So yeah. I always appreciate when uh, they do a good job of keeping the mystery locked down all the way to the end. Um, but Donna was my absolute favorite aspect of the entire episode. Her like uh, being so entertained and like uh, plugged into trying to figure out at what point the mystery is actually revealed between um, the doctor and uh, Agatha Christie doing their you know reveal I thought was so great I thought yeah. it's so spot on and honestly very relatable because that's how you are as you're like watching these scenarios play out as somebody that's watching a movie or watching a show, that's the exact type of dialogue you're having. Like, oh, it's them. Oh, no, it's mm -hmm. not them. So I thought that was just really well constructed, and she killed it. I loved her so much in this episode. So another entertaining episode. to look forward to the next one. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for Doctor Who Season 4, Episode number 7. And until next time.